What up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hate Line ABD. I'm your host coming to you live from my not depression chamber. Here, take a look at this. Uh oh. Did somebody get, did somebody drink a little too many beers last night and watch the new horrible Jonah Hill movie? <laughs> You, dude, this guy said he's gonna take off his shoes so you, you're wearing vans, man. You don't want to crease your vans? Who cares about creasing vans? I stuck up for Jonah Hill in the, in the Mikey Alfred video, videos that I did, and I was like, Jonah Hill, he's a well-respected Hollywood man. Mikey Alfred should, should take his lead instead of arguing with him. Well... I have changed my opinion on that. That movie set society back a couple thousand years. Okay, I'm going to level with you guys here. There's not much going on right now um, in skateboarding, it feels like. I guess uh, we had that real three seasons video. That was a snooze festival. I mean, Tanner Van Vark kind of does some some cool tricks, except, I don't know, I couldn't help but, like, just stare at his outfits the entire time, and I was like, I wonder when the last time he put something on his body that he didn't receive from a skateboarding sponsor. Like, every single element of his outfit, down to his underwear slash socks, is all free shit. Nothing screams sponsored skater like Spitfire socks and Kyle Walker slip on Quaker shoes, but he is good, but he is good. Oh, also Patrick Promen scraped the shit out of that manual. I don't even know why they put that in. Bruh, that shit look like the battle pass. Perfect. It was so zoomed in too. It was just horrible, brother. You gotta go back and do that shit again. So because there's nothing going on really, I'm gonna talk about Greg Lutzka. Based off my interactions in real life with people that watch my videos, I would say the median age is about 14 and a half years old. If you're 14 and a half, you probably have no idea who Greg Lutzka is. He used to be the shit. Um, and now he's like sort of, I guess, doing influencer-ish stuff now. I don't really understand why anyone paying him any money to advertise their products drink clean on the green with golfer aid it's apparently like a, a drink that is synthesized to enhance the performance of, of golfers and this got uh, 46 likes so he has a hundred and forty thousand followers and some of his ad posts get 46 likes that's because basically everything he posts is a fucking ad stoked to announce we just released my new signature free bird bobster eyewear bobster cool looks like someone hacked his page that's how shitty his page is <laughs> My eyeballs are screaming for mercy. If I turn on the news right now, like channel nine, and I saw like local Florida man eats infant, like he would be wearing, say he's wearing this bucket right here with these shorts and this jersey. That's the full Florida man cannibal outfit. As bad as these clothes are, the real problem with them is it's a, they're a missed opportunity. If you're Greg Lutzka and you're gonna do an apparel line, my question is, where the fuck is the fedora? If Thanos releases merch, what's he doing? He's putting out the Infinity Gauntlet. If Ricky Glazer releases merch, he's gonna sell those weird above-the-knee tan shorts that he likes wearing for some reason. If the Hyphenate drops something, what's he putting out? Hot verse Sunday number four. I don't give a damn about having the hottest chick. Yeah. All I really want in my life is an honest chick. Perfect. Also, uh, he's got a documentary coming out. Um... The story of Greg Lutzka, one-way ticket, a kid aboard a dream. I'm actually like genuinely curious. I've never heard of any information about Greg Lutzka's like tormented past or his upbringing. Everything about this looks totally generic and, and standard. The story of Greg Lutzka, one-way ticket. I think it'd be funny if, if this dropped and everything was like really, really average to justify a docu- like a documentary about somebody, um, especially Greg Lutzka, because Greg Lutzka's like kind of famous but he's not famous enough for people to be interested in his life if no major event transpired so like if you did a documentary about my life right it would be like pretty fucking average there would be no like twists or turns gifted farter 
grew up in Orange County in a single family home. His parents got divorced at a young age, too young for him to remember, so the psychological repercussions of a divorce really didn't have much effect on him. He went to a private school, a weird private school, where they made him draw a lot of pictures and he did not do well. Then he went to high school and also did poorly. And then he went to community college for five years and <laughs> just took random bullshit classes and then started a YouTube channel. Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> an extremely unremarkable story and i don't know what is going to be in this greg let's go one i'm hanging on the edge of my seat of my my mesh office chair seat that i got so i could fart and it would go through the chair instead of just sitting on top of it and and lingering okay let's go on to a more serious note now and take a look at this post that i have been checking out for a while i would imagine that this kind of thing is going to become more popular with skateboarding now being a viable path into the olympics the skate dad helicopter parents situation i think would get worse and it's a really weird area because these dads make their kids do really fucked up stuff, but it's like, at what point is it reportable behavior, you know? And I think that this video crosses a line, in my opinion, where I would be like, huh, if I were working for some sort of government entity and I stumbled across this video, I would, I would definitely see a red flag or two. Four years old, eight stair battle. So you can see him trying to ollie. Horrible filming, by the way. If you're going to send your kid down like a death leap, at least film it properly. Jesus Christ. Like your fucking leg and arm is in here. <clears throat> Clearly this, <laughs> this, this four-year-old child, his body is not yet developed enough to take this kind of impact. I think that's pretty obvious. And after the first couple goes... As a father, this is the part that is like, that I find to be really fucked up. You're supposed to be protecting your kid. You don't want to put your kid in harm's way. <clears throat> Dude, this kid's head just bounced off the concrete. And then he zooms in on the kid's face crying, like humiliating him. And then he fucking posts it to Instagram. If you're a little kid, right, and like your worldview is going to be so fucked up if the people that you trust the most in the world are putting you in danger all the time. So that last situation was the same as this... I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Trey the Tank, but this is, this is the same thing, but on a larger scale, literally. So this kid is six fucking years old in this video. What's wrong? Are you scared? Are you scared to jump off of something that's three times your height? Like, do you, do you think this kid is even allowed to watch a rated R movie? Like, if you're not allowed to watch a rated R movie, you should not be put in a position where a stunt that you're about to attempt could result in a rated R outcome. All right, after that, if, if that's my child and it tries to jump off something and it lands and goes, Aah! that's it. I'm, I'm throwing the towel in and we're going to Chuck E. Cheese. God damn, that was brutal. But it doesn't, it doesn't end. There's more. Okay, look at... Look what happens to his body. He is in the air for too fucking long, dude. He ragdolls when he hits the ground. Look! He's now 60% smaller than he used to be. His, his knees and his shins and his ankles all just exploded at the same time. <laughs> Gotta get up and do it again. If you don't jump off this thing one more time, no dinner. And in skateboarding, generally, I don't like to be like, you know, that was luck. I think it's really fucked up if somebody lands something or rolls away and you say that was luck. This kid was put in a life or death situation and he narrowly scraped by. Look at that shit. You're- Look! <laughs> no one's body should ever do this. Ow. And whose fucking idea was it to put the GoPro right in the landing area? Jesus Christ. What are you trying to kill him? He's not even fucking happy. He's sad. This is not- This shit is seriously uncool. Like, I know some people look at this stuff and they're like, Oh my god. What a, a young prodigy. So much talent and potential. If your kid is a prodigy and they have any type of- potential you're squeezing that shit right out of them and guess what when he fucking grows up and he 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 actually has free will and he's an adult what do you think the odds are that he's gonna want to skateboard i hope he still skateboards but geez comments turned off yeah that's how you know 
Okay, John, I watch everything John Hill puts out. I think I've talked about this in the past. I'm addicted to his shitty videos. And I was just enjoying a little bit of John Hill when he did a little promo for his rail company. And uh, I kind of, I just wanted to, I just wanted to call him out for being a fucking munch. And one way that you can easily build skill is with my beginner flat rail. It is the best flat rail for new beginners if you're a little more. What, as opposed to experienced beginners, John? <laughs> so you can also raise it up a little bit and just try crazy tricks to prepare to do them down handrails. Mm. There's a reason why all these big skateboard YouTubers use these rails in their videos all the time. So link in description. There's a reason that these big name YouTubers are using John Hill's particular products. There's no other rail that you could substitute these with because John Hill hasn't produced the same exact fucking rail that's already been in circulation for over 20 years. This looks uh, pretty much identical to the pink zero rail that I had when I was like six six years old. The real reason that these big name YouTubers use your rails, John, is because you fucking sent them to them. And I asked both of these guys, both of them are like, John Hill just sent me these. There's a reason that these big name YouTubers use my rails like they have some sort of fucking special flat bar property. The only special property that your rails have that other flat bars don't is that they were free to some people. John, I'm on your ass like you're on P-Rod's ass. I'm coming for P-Rod's ass. Battery 60%. And you know what? I'm coming for that ass. I'd say he successfully came on P-Rod's ass. Or Okay, you guys remember uh, in my last video, or no, two videos ago, what was it, two videos ago? What would that be about nine months ago on my schedule? Oh, I discussed how Lurpiv might be making a comeback. I have something to show you guys. Um, I'm probably not supposed to do this. I feel like maybe they'd be pissed if I showed this. I think these are, are samples. Um, of the new Lurpiv trucks. They look really fucking crazy. They look like if you drop them in a pool, they would float. I see a lot of similarities to the initial, uh, the first Lurpiv design, which I'll toss up right over here. Um, there's got to be a more efficient way of me doing this. But they look pretty similar to me. The thing that I noticed that is different is... I think the first model, sorry, excuse me, I'm not uh, Ben DeLongcock here. I don't have all the technical specifications um, when comparing these two things, but I think the 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 first Lurpivs had an inverted kingpin, and I think these new ones just have a regular uh, kingpin on them. So the thing that Lurpiv first tried to accomplish is they wanted to do like turning with zero wheel bite, and they wanted to have some like new kind of kingpin system. And I think they just said, fuck that, we're going to do a normal kingpin system, but we're still going to have the really huge looking truck. I think these look pretty cool. And I think it's smart if these trucks actually work this time um, and they're trying to do like a rebrand. I think it's smart that they go for something bold, you know, and they make a, a green truck so that it's like really recognizable. We'll see. I mean, I'm going to I'll try them again. Fuck it. I want Lurpiv. I want Lurpiv to succeed which is why I'm leaking their trucks uh, early. We have a new segment called Case of Point, and I'm going to throw this dart. And we also have three cases. <laughs> and each briefcase, we have a picture of obstacles that we have to take with us to each spot. Do you guys remember Off the Grid? This is pretty much just Off the Grid, except they have briefcases now. I guess they're trying to take it back to their roots a little bit and be like, the barracks is back. You know, the barracks is just like it was. So they're bringing back old segments, right? They can never just do anything straightforward. They can never just make a fucking normal video. There always has to be some weird, like, fucked up little agenda behind it. Um, The first thing that's going to, like, pop out to you is, like, this is this whole thing is just a Karyuma ad, obviously. Everything the Barracks does is a fucking ad, but everybody who skates in this video is a Karyuma rider. South okay, so put on your tinfoil hat. I'm going to get a little bit insane here. Does everyone see where the dart is? Yes, I'm really fucking doing this for a Barracks video with uh, 8.7 thousand views. I'm really... <laughs> I'm really going to do this. And I know this is ridiculous, but I just want to point out the fact that the, the barracks can never just do something without some kind of deception or tomfuckery involved. See the dart? You see? Okay, it's, it's on a downward trajectory. If it was here this frame, and now it's here that frame, where the fuck did it go? It just disappeared. It vanishes into thin air. Okay, maybe this is some kind of mistake or... Or camera thing. Okay, now you can kind of see it here again on this side of the building. So it just disappears for a frame, which, okay, maybe that's suspicious. But that's not like concrete evidence of anything. 
I can see where it lands. It lands right here, right next, right on the outside of the board. But instead of just walking up and showing where it lands, which, by the way, is what they used to do. So they throw the dart. Silver Lake. That makes sense. In this one, they throw the dart, and then they cut. Um, they don't walk up and show it. Now, you might be saying, okay, that's, that's, no, that's no proof. That's no evidence of anything. Um, all right. What about this? What about the fucking dart-sized hole <laughs> that is right next to where they fucking put the dart? 